Revelations 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Ha'arakar, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who are well, and Shalom to the whole full lek. This is Pai Allah from the GMS London camp, and this is News and Prophecy, Prophecy and News. I have an article from Sky News that I want to delve into. And um, today's actually Remembrance Day, right? And it shows you how demonic these people are, man, because they'll remember the day of the Great War and all these kind of things, but they don't. They they fail to remember all the the hardships of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans by choice. By choice, I guarantee. Um, but. In saying that, the reason why I mention it is because of, that will be the, the, the go-to excuse to say, well, you guys, you know, you need to forget about all that and just pick yourself up by the bootstraps, you know, buck up your ideas and do, you know, make a way for your people. And it's like, that, that ain't what you guys did, all right? That ain't what all these other heathen nations did. They basically exploited Jake. All right, for them to establish their position in the uh, on the earth. All right, so I'm gonna delve into this article anyway. So it says risk is from Sky News. It says risk of new world war is real. Head of UK armed forces warns. All right, and he didn't need to say it for us to know it. The Bible said Yah Bashem El Shai Bashem Al Rakar Kodash. Right, he the Most High through His Son and the Holy Spirit said it. All right, so but it just shows you that they're in tune with the spirit of prophecy, or tuning the spirit, which the testimony is is testified by the prophecy of the Bible, all right? So they're in tune with it, all right? So, um, let me play this quickly. The history might not the repeat history itself, might not repeat it has itself, a rhythm. It has if a you rhythm. look back at the, look last, back century, at the last century, before both, before world, both wars, world wars, I think it was think it unarguable was that unarguable there was escalation, was escalation that led to the miscalculation, led which ultimately led to war at a scale we would scale hopefully we never see again. Never Are you saying that's a real threat, threat, that there could be another world war? I'm saying it's a risk, and I think we need to be conscious of those risks. And that's why remembrance matters, because if you look back at history, hopefully you learn from their experience, and you make sure that you're very cautious about how you manage the sorts of regional conflicts that we see playing out in the world today. All right, so um, for it, that video just brings one scripture to mind, being Sirach 5 and 15, be not ignorant of any, um, in any matter, um, small or great. I'm loosely paraphrasing, but you can look it up in Ecclesiasticus 5 and 15, right? And they're trying to be wise, but... Again, they were they were ignorant, nonetheless, right? Because the so-called Negroes, Spanish, and Native Americans, the elect of that nation of Israel, all right, is going to be risen up, and there's nothing they can do to stop it. So it says there is a risk of a new world war if current small conflicts escalate out of control, drawing in more countries and weapons. Um, the head of the UK Armed Forces has warned. General Sir Nick Carter said the global eco economic crisis caused by the coronavirus pandemic could also trigger new security threats, even war. Right? So on one hand, it's made it. Their idea with doing the, you know, the pandemic and whatnot is, is pushing forward their agenda. But at the same time, the... the, the um, the overspill of that is that now you got new threats, right? There's ripple effects to what you've done, what they've done, right? So it says in an interview with Sky News for Remembrance Sunday, the chief of defense staff ordered a vision of Britain's army of the 2030s, saying it could comp um, comprise. Uh, ninety thousand human troops and thirty thousand robots. Right, so showing you that in the next, after this decade, 
they they plan they intend to have an army that is f- is full of basically a third of that army um not a third ninety thousand being humans and thirty thousand being robots right and you can you've been seeing this. In America, dealing with DARPA, all right, they've been sharing their different little tools they they have, and how they've been making, you know, leaps and bounds in, you know, bettering their technology. So Reno says he also revealed a desire for a multi-year budget settlement from the Treasury this month to enable the military to make the long-term investments needed to modernize. All right, the Chancellor scrapped plans for a multi-year spending review for government departments in November because of uncertainty uncertainty related to COVID-19. Instead, one-year budgets are being prepared, though talks are continuing to see if the Ministry of Defence can have a different settlement. It is unusual for a senior military officer to comment on an impending political decision. Speaking at the National Army Museum in London, General Carter underlined the importance of remembrance even at a time when the country is dealing with COVID-19, the COVID-19 crisis and growing economic woes. It is about honouring those who gave their lives in service for our country. And of course, they did that to protect our way of life and our freedom. Now, what you... Spirit just hit me, man. What what's going over your <laughs> what's going over a lot of people's heads? This is a psyop, yeah. It's actually a documentary. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a short video on for a recommendation to watch it. But basically that's we're in the information age, yeah, and currently uh, it is a psychological operation or better known as a psyop going on continuously, more or less, alright? Propaganda is being infiltrated into your mind non-stop via the, you know, the, um, your phone, all right? And, um, in saying that, um, this, this paragraph here, right? Reason why this is, is kind of, um, drove my memory, stirred on my mind. is because, um, trying to remember now I saw another article where they said no one's gonna the army were basically saying there's nowhere stopping them from celebrating Remembrance Day in honour of the the men that fought in war you know in the war basically but let me read this paragraph so it says it is about honouring those who gave their lives in the service of our country and of course they did that to protect our way of life and our freedom I think it would be very dangerous if we forgot that, he said, right? And they're basically, you know, churning propaganda into the minds of the people on Remembrance Day, letting them know that there's going to be a new world war as well. So it's making, it's enabling the people, the, you know, when they come out and they say there's going to be a draft and everyone's got to go to war and whatnot, that... The propaganda has been set in place as to what, as to people wanting to go and make a move and do so, right? Ask why it would be dangerous, he said, because I think what we would also forget is the true horror of war. And if we forget about the horror of war, then the great risk, I think, is that people might think going to war is a reasonable thing to do. Economic crisis is in the past have led to security crises, crises. Um, and General Carr said he's, he was worried this could happen again given a blow inflicted on the world ec- economy by the pandemic. I think we are living at the moment in time where the world is very uncertain and anxious place, he said. I think the real risk we have with quite a lot of region uh, regional conflicts that are going on at the moment is you could see escalation lead to mis- miscalculation and that is a thing I think we have to guard against, right? Um, one moment. 
pick out some points. He didn't specify which conflicts, but at least thousand a thousand people have died in early six weeks of fighting and then clashed between Turkey backed Azerbaijan and Russia allied Armenia over mountainous enclave of Nogorno Karabakh. And what you gotta understand is Turkey backed Azerbaijan is only Turkey's trying to get part of what the EU. Right, which is part of the B system spoke of in the book of Revelations, the thirteenth chapter. Okay, the NATO and the EU. They're trying to become part of that that um that block of nations and then seeking to do so shit. In seeking to do so, basically they're they're it's a proxy war ultimately between America and Russia, all right? At the same time, your countries including Russia, Iran, Iran, the US and the UK have forces operating in and around Syria. So that's still going on, all right? They ain't stopped going back to the Arab Spring in 2011. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, a conflict is continuing between Russia-backed separatists and in the east of the country and Ukrainian government forces that still ain't stopped, all right? Um, turning to the UK, the top commander said he did not know whether the Treasury would give defence a multi-year budget settlement. <laughs> all right, at the moment, there are negotiations going on in a very constructive way. Um... Okay, so it says, um, but clearly from our perspective, we are going to argue for something like that because we need long-term investment because long-term investment gives us the opportunity to have confidence in modernization. Modernization essentially means you are going to park some capabilities, perhaps from the industrial age, and want to look forward to some of the capabilities you need from an information age. And having the confidence to do that, of course, means you need the confidence for long-term investment, right? Anyway, I'm going to... Lord willing, I'm going to... You know, in the video uh, description box, I'm just going to... this scripture again same scripture I started off it says Revelation 11 14 the second world is past behold the third world cometh quickly right when was the second world that passed that's dealing with uh, World War 2 right that passed back in 1945 right then you had the Cold War during the separation of the um, German scientists the wise men of Timon or the, the wise men of Esau or many being divided between America and Russia, then it, you know, moving towards the Cold War, right, where you had info wars more or less between the US and, and Russia, USR as it was known back then, USSR, and basically um, then they fell, but now they've risen again to fulfill prophecy, right, of them being the feet of Esau's kingdoms, all right, the, the bear's feet, all right, so it says, um, the second world passed, so that second world war has passed, and behold, the third world coming quickly, so this third world war is coming quickly, all right, and you can see it, that's why we have, um, it being said by this military personnel, so it says, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord, right? And of his anointed, Hamashiach, 
and he shall reign forever and ever. All right. And the precepts with Daniel's the fourth chapter of the seventeenth verse, I believe, which it says, "And the saints shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever." Amen. All right. So with that, I pray you edify and save the world.